Hello and welcome to another installment of Talking Trash. As always, I am your host FizzGeek, and if you're a returning subscriber, I would just like to say, uh, you know, welcome back. It's nice to see you again. And uh, if you're new here, I just want to say, uh, hey, I'm I'm FizzGeek. It's a pleasure to meet you. Today we are going to be taking another deep dive into one of my favorite genres of B movies, which is super animal creature features. Now, if you don't know, uh, I have covered one of these before on this channel, Slugs. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, there should be a link somewhere, but this movie makes that movie look like Citizen Kane in comparison. That's enough rambling though. The movie we're going to be talking about today is a Polonia Brothers Super Piranha horror movie, beautifully titled Razor Teeth. This movie is really bizarre. Like nothing happens in it. I mean, of course things happen, there are scenes with actors who do actions and things, but none of it builds or evolves or works towards an actual plot or anything like that. It just kind of stumbles around and then it ends. There's really no way for me to properly explain it except by just showing it to you, so let's jump straight into the movie. In 2002, an American Russian submarine sank 40 miles off the coast of Florida. Today, a secret government operation is being sent to salvage a classified experiment. So then we see this special unit go out and try and retrieve this classified experiment, and I just want to point out how unprofessional they seem. Hey, look, we got a visitor. I'm gonna get a picture from my son. So they scuba dive down to this sunken ship, the sunken submarine, and they briefly look around the exterior of it and just immediately find the experiment. We find out the secret experiment is piranhas in bags, and we immediately slap them on a plane and send them to HQ. Great work boys, another job well done. Now, I know what my videos look like, right? So I know I have no room to talk, but when I see this... For US government in trouble. Engines on fire, losing altitude, I repeat, mayday, mayday! I'd be lying if I didn't say it made me feel a little good about how shitty my effects look. So the plane goes down and crashes into the lake and the piranhas, you know, swim out of their bags and we see this guy see it, or maybe we don't see him see it? I'm not sure. The way the edit is constructed, it makes it seem like he's watching the crash happen, but the reaction he gives is nothing. Uh, the plane just landed in the lake and exploded in front of him, and this is his reaction? Really? At this point, we get the credits of the movie, and they are backed by one of the sickest songs I've ever heard in my life. It's a good thing this movie probably never played in theaters, because I know that if it had, the audience would just be fucking. The first pointless subplot of the movie that doesn't connect to anything at all and has no reason existing is about Tom and Sheila. And there was really no reason for me to mention their names as they are completely pointless, as is everything in this movie. So Sheila's out on a jog and she decides that she needs to take a dip in the lake. I need to cool off. Tom can wait. She then proceeds to get into the water and has her ankles bitten to death. <sighs> Did we really need to hear that sound three times? Cause I think maybe we needed to hear it four. Tom, who has been patiently waiting by the car this whole time, decides that he should probably start looking for Sheila. Time to go looking for ya. Tom treks around the lake uh, looking for Sheila and eventually comes upon her shoe floating in the water.
Sheila? No, Tom. That is a shoe. Just when you thought it was safe to stand next to the water, razor teeth, swimming to a theater near you. This next character is so unimportant to the plot that we don't even learn his name. He's the pilot of the plane that crashed into the lake, and I guess he knows about the piranhas? I know you're out there. Out there waiting. So this guy really only does two things. He walks to the lake and yells at the lake that he knows that the fish are out there. And then he leaves and then walks back to the lake in what I'm going to assume is the exact same shot. And in fact, I'm going to play them side by side now in the edit to figure it out. Was I right? Were they the same shot? I, I don't know. I refuse to check before filming this because I'm an idiot. So he walks back to the lake and challenges the piranhas to a duel. I can feel your eyes on me, watching me. You're not getting me. You hear? You're not getting me! So, after yelling about how they're not going to get him, he proceeds to get into the water and get got. You want some? Come get some! You're not getting me! While the pilot is getting got, we see a second appearance of guy who doesn't know how to react to things properly. Gee, I didn't know fishing could be that stressful. You're probably thinking, well, this guy didn't know he was being attacked, he was just making a little joke to himself. But I beg to differ. I like to think that he did know he's being attacked by piranhas and just found it that amusing. Because remember, this is a guy who saw a plane crash and barely reacted. So clearly we're dealing with a psychopath. Gee, I didn't know fishing could be that stressful. The next subplot is about Mr. Godfrey, the owner of the local resort. Uh, how may I help you? Godfrey learns about these piranhas through some weird voiceover thing. Mr. Godfrey, we've had several complaints from guests. They say they've been bitten by fish. Uh, you might want to check this out. People are getting a bit nervous. Every time I watch that scene, it throws me off, because it opens and it sounds like a letter. The way the voice is so even and they're trying to sound professional, it sounds like, you know, a letter you would write to your boss. But then just right at the end, they do a little change up with the, uh, yeah, you should probably check it out. My dearest Jonathan, it has been so long since I have heard from you. I worry that perhaps you have fallen in battle. I pray every night for your safe return, that I may look upon your face and place my lips upon your rosy cheeks once more. Yours truly, Lady. <gasps> A letter from Jonathan. My heart and soul. I apologize for not writing to you sooner. I have been very preoccupied with the goings on around camp. Like last night, they had these strippers come out and like, I wasn't looking or nothing cause I mean, I'm with you, I don't even see other women but like, you know, they was throwing it in my face, I couldn't help but see it and you know honestly they served us wings and I'ma keep it real, that shit bussin. Yours only, Jonathan. P.S. Nudes? So Godfrey ends up going down to the lake and doing some investigation for himself and finds the fish that jumped out of the water to get Tom earlier in the movie. Lakes are big. The surrounding, you know, land of a lake is full of woods and all this stuff. And so the odds of this character just so happening to wander onto this exact spot is insane. And stuff like that is constantly happening in this movie. Ah! 
So the fish comes back to life for only a moment, and while it's biting Mr. Godfrey's hand, we see the psychopath just straight chilling. Is is he? Are you? Can you? Are you guys in the same scene, or is he? Where where are we? Must be they're biting pretty good, Mr. Godfrey. I, I guess he can see the guy. We we really need like an establishing shot so that we can tell that they're both in the same spot because i mean this could be anywhere on the lake yeah just stay down with my guests okay neighbor Ooh, fucking roasted my guy that was like that was like fucking watching a airplane full of evil fish crash into a lake godfrey then heads back to the hotel bandages up his hand and calls his brother Hey, little brother. How's the stump removal business? Oh, I've got a really big stump to deal with. Is that supposed to mean anything to me? Because it doesn't. I guess that whenever you remove stumps, you use dynamite. Because the next time we see Godfrey, he's packing meat onto dynamite and then chucking it into the lake. Again, I have to mention the size of this lake. The piranhas could be anywhere in it. I guess I gotta take that back. He, he got like three of them right there. Fuck, as long as it keeps working, keep doing it, brother. Unlucky. After Mr. Godfrey, we get to my two favorite characters in the movie and my favorite subplot, Fisherman and Partner. I guess I should clarify. Fisherman is the guy and Partner is the name of the dog. And the reason they're my favorite subplot and characters is because they don't want to do anyone any harm at all. They literally just sit on the edge of the bank and want to fish. The piranha keeps stealing fisherman's bait, so he decides to go and get a bigger hook to put bigger meat on. Damn, them little thieves. Let's see old Moby Dick get a hold of this and... I know nothing about fishing, but if a fish is stealing your bait off your hook, is the solution to just get a bigger hook? Damn, partner. Look there! Clearly not, because the fish keeps stealing the bait, and the fisherman gives up and decides to go home and take a dump. You know, I'm, I'm glad that fisherman got away from the lake, because I was getting a little nervous there that one of the piranha were going to get him. No. No. Oh, come on, no. No. No.
God, I I'd love to see the investigation that follows this. Tonight on Lake Detective, Detective Lake bites off more than he can chew when some bodies start to turn up around the lake. Detective Lake, the body's over here. Give me the lowdown. Well, the man's name was Fisherman. That was his first and last name. The man sat down to take a dump on his john. Something came up through the pipes, went up to the tree, threw the man's asshole up his intestine, and then shot out his chest. Lake, you're the best damn lake detective in the world. You ever seen anything like this? Never. It seems Detective Lake may have finally met his match for the 20th season in a row. What are you thinking, Lake? I think the case smells... Fishy. Don't miss the all-new episode tonight at 7, right after an all-new episode of The Big Bang Theory. The next subplot is one of the more complex and dynamic ones, while still being completely pointless and not building towards anything. It's about a couple, Lyra and John, who are going through a sort of rough patch. We see Lyra packing her bags and driving off early in the morning. John wakes up and finds the note she left him. John, I'm not sure of my feelings for you anymore. I need some time to think about it. Two days, three, maybe a week. I'll be all right. I'm going to be at the lake. Please don't come looking for me. I'll call you when I've decided. After this weekend, I'll be a free woman. Her note made it sound like she was maybe on the fence, but that definitely sounds like she's made up her mind. As it turns out, it doesn't matter because she goes for a dip in the lake and instantly becomes fish feed. I love in this movie how anytime someone gets attacked by the fish in water, it takes them like a solid 20 seconds before they actually react to being attacked in the water. So Lyra's dead, and John goes down to the lake to look for her. I just have to bring up the size of the lake once again. This guy is just searching through a random part of the woods near the lake, and I mean, the odds of him being anywhere near where she would be is insane. Lyra! Man, where the hell is she? Brother, you need a search party. Just wandering around the woods, calling your dead ex-girlfriend's name isn't gonna solve anything. This has got to be the luckiest motherfucker in existence. Not only did he find his girlfriend's swimsuit, not even where she died, but he also survived an attack from a piranha. After being attacked, John decides that something seems fishy around here. So he goes and gets Dave for some help, and I have no idea who Dave is or what his relation is with John, but maybe they'll explain it in the scene. Dave, I need your help. Yeah, there's something going on at the lake. And might what? I, I'm sorry, wh what? Sure, sure, let's go. I can't. I have no idea what you're saying. Thanks a lot. John and Dave go back to the lake and split up to search for Lyra. Why don't we split up? I, I think we can cover more ground that way. It's a good idea. Um, why don't we meet back at the cabin at nightfall? Okay, sounds good. We'll, we'll find Lyra long before then. I bet you would never guess what happens to John. We're gonna forget about Dave for a second. Well, don't worry, we'll come back to it though as we head into our final subplot. And while it is still a subplot, it is the most main of the subplots, if that makes sense. Our story starts at the, uh, well, ah, of course. It starts at the Secret Projects Division section, 29 US government. Is that the mailing address or what is that? 
At this facility, we meet Agent Fields, but I'm just going to be calling him Agent. So Agent here gets a call from a guy on the phone and receives his assignment. Agent Fields here. This is Agent Dawson. We have an assignment for you. Are you up to the task? Yes, sir. I've been waiting for a chance to spread my wings. Yes, uh, okay, fine. I feel like Agent responded very appropriately. I don't know why this guy's acting like Agent's wasting everyone's time. Listen, details. One of our planes went down in a lake in Pennsylvania. Now, this plane happened to be carrying some special passengers, shall we say. Piranha. Bro, now who's the one wasting everyone's time? Just call them piranhas. Stop being coy. Thank you. Yes. 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 We need you to go to the lake, find out if any of these fish have survived, and report back the fate of Operation Killer Fish. Release no detailed information to anyone, and if anybody knows of these fish, Eliminate them. Do you understand? Yes, sir. Agent heads down to the town where the piranha are and decides he's going to stay at the local resort. Agent almost runs over Fisherman and Partner on their way to their fishing hole and Fisherman just starts talking about fishing. You moron, I almost hit you with my van! I'm sorry, me and partner were going fishing. I tell you what, we go down there quite a bit and do some fishing, but it ain't been the same since all them people have been coming around. All them city folks come in here and me and partner have been fishing down there for years and just ain't catching the things we used to. Especially since that dang plane came down right in the middle of the lake. I think it scared half my fish away. Used to get them big catfish in there, boy, I tell you what, they cook up pretty good. Oh, I, I guess we're done talking. Agent heads down to the resort and gets himself a room. Bet this place is pretty pricey. Uh, how may I help you? I'm sorry, but I just cannot accept that this is what the inside of this looks like. Hi, I'd like a room. Here you are, you'll be uh, in cabin 12. Come on, movie. It would be so easy to find a regular key. Why, why would you use a car key that has a giant company logo on it? I have a suspicion that while filming this movie, they had a really hard time getting actors on set on the same days because a lot of the interactions are awkward and no one ever is like responding appropriately. Prime example, as Agent is getting in his van after buying his room and, you know, heading out to research, he is accosted by the plane pilot. Get out of here while you still can! Hey! I thought I told you to stay out of here! You'll be sorry! You'll all be sorry! That's pretty bad, but after that interaction, the uh, owner of the resort comes out to talk to Agent, and we get one of the most awkward interactions I've ever seen. He's been hanging around here, and I really hate to call the police. My heart really goes out to him, so please accept my apologies. That's okay, man. Just keep the freaks away from me, all right? Okay, then. Enjoy your visit. You'll be sorry. You'll all be sorry. Sorry about that guy. He hasn't been the same since that plane crash, you know? He just, he's been hanging around here and I just, I, I feel bad to call the cops on him, you know? So please, accept my apologies. Yeah, man, whatever. Just keep the freaks away from me. I just can't seem to catch a break, God, ain't that just so mad, man? Is that a man should I see ahead, man? I must be up. Never you come to see my kid. You have to see me from peeing him. I don't care if I'm an alcoholic, I'm going to see my fucking kid. I just don't understand why you're being so mean to me. 
I'll fucking do it. You do it, for bitch. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll fucking pull. The, I'll fucking pull the trigger, motherfucker. Enjoy your stay. Agent goes out to the lake and begins just walking around it like everyone else, hoping he finds the piranha, I guess. You guys remember when John got attacked by that piranha when he found that swimsuit earlier? Well, guess what? Agent was there. That means that Agent knows that John knows about the piranhas. And what did the phone guy tell John he had to do? Eliminate them. And you remember how I didn't want to talk about what happened to Dave just yet, right? Well... He killed him with a really tiny gun. Gone too soon and instantly forgotten. Salute. Agent goes to the resort house to tell the phone guy that he knows that the piranhas are in the lake. The fish are alive, sir. Excellent. Do you have the poison bomb? So just, so just to put it in perspective, the main subplot of this movie is plane full of evil fish crash into lake. Government sends Guy to see if evil fish are still alive. Guy finds out evil fish are alive, and then government tells Guy, hey, you know that bomb we gave you? Yeah, use that. Twist the cap and throw it into the lake. It's time to stop this project. And you might be thinking, oh, well, certainly there will be complications with setting the bomb off, right? Either it won't work initially, or the piranha will be immune, or we'll have to take it out to the middle of the lake and the piranhas will make it hard. We'll have to scuba it down to the bottom and, you know, we'll have to fight off the piranhas. But no, none of that happens. No, Agent just casually drives to the lake, stops for a little bit and yells at some kids. Hey, kids, get out of that water! Get out of that water before I kick your asses! What a fucking... Dwee, bro. He, he gives off such Dwight energy from the office. After that stellar scene, he just casually strolls down to the water's edge while really intense music plays. Don't ask. So he's down by the water's edge, he takes out the bomb, puts it in the water, it floats out to the lake, sinks down, goes off, and all the fish die. No problemo. Job well done, Agent. Looks like everything's coming together perfectly. Wait, who's that guy? What's he doing out here? Oh my god! Why would you explode, Agent? Just when I was starting to like him, too! Dawson here. This is Agent Decker, sir. Operation cleanup is finished. All ties with knowledge of the killer fish is erased. Excellent work, Decker. I can't believe phone guy double-crossed us. This whole accident has pushed our experiment ahead by three years. I'll be reporting our findings to the president when he returns from Camp David. Wait, why wouldn't you just send this guy to do the mission? Why would you send a guy that you would later have to kill? That just seems stupid. You know, at the end of the day, at least we killed all the evil fish. Right, movie? Right, movie? No. 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 No! But that is where our story ends. This is a very bizarre movie. It has basically no plot. It, like nothing builds or evolves or like becomes anything. Like I said at the very beginning, the movie just stumbles and then it ends. I do want to say this movie was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, all the weird, awkward interactions between characters kept me chuckling throughout the whole thing.
I mentioned up top that this was a Polonia Brothers movie, and this was actually the first one of their movies I've ever watched. I've always kind of steered clear from this era and style of bad movies, but I will say that I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Uh, I also saw that a couple of their other films are on Amazon Prime, which coincidentally is where I found this gem of a movie. So if you liked the video and would like to see me try and cover some more of the Polonia Brothers movies, be sure to hit that like button, and if you made it this far, be sure to comment down below which of the pointless subplots was your favorite. If you want to see more videos like this, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, and be sure to ring that bell icon so you never miss an upload. If you don't want to wait for me to upload and you haven't watched my other videos, please be sure to go and do that. There should be a link somewhere on the screen to the rest of the Talking Trash playlist. Once again, thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, be sure to go and follow me on Twitter. Uh, also, uh, I have a Twitch, twitch.tv slash fizzgig. Uh, if you don't know, I started a subreddit for Talking Trash, which is just another place for me to be posting these videos. Um, it also can be a space for anyone who wants to discuss bad movies or you know, if you want to post trailers to movies that I've never even seen or heard of or anything, you can go ahead and put that there. I'd love to see it. Links to all of that will be down in the description below. But yeah, I think that's going to do it for now. So I will see you in the next one. Bye. Get yourself in a tailspin